Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to my press conference and it's a happy mood around Clubland at Shorty Superstars. We again exit the weekend with a very positive and promising score. The Shorty Superstars motor is starting to really get rolling. I stalled it in the driveway initially but once we're now into the open spaces this engine is really starting to get going and we're starting to roll and we're starting to make some ground. I scored 2,158, that's in the top 4% for the week. Again, I moved up significantly, moving up 11,000 spots to 27,000, roughly around there. And that puts me in the top 12% there. So I'm really starting to make some headway and really get somewhere which is extremely promising. I won six of my nine leagues, I'll touch on the Supercoach HQ League later in the piece. But if we cross over to my side now, as you can see, it was a combination of some really good scores and some equally poor scores, but by some more popular players. So, you know, there are a lot of players, those cash cows that have been good for us and are popular, but had poorer scores. So I guess that's what it means. And, and Gorn as well, it hurts you less because more people have them. So you know, especially the top sides. It may only say they're in 30% of teams, but there's probably only 50% of good teams out there. There's half of the comp doesn't quite really know what they're doing with all due respect. You know, they, they lose their way after those initial rounds where they just copy people's teams and things like that. If you don't know how to do it, you fall away by this sort of time. Now, a lot of you out there would be thinking the same, that you know, you're starting to move up in the rankings after a tough opening period. That's because you've got a bit of know-how, and I'd like to think most of the people watching this, and myself included, we know how to win Supercoach, and we know how to make not just a good starting team, which I didn't do, mind you, but we know how to build it continually and work on it. So that's probably what I'm starting to see now. I mean, I struggled against much of the competition early, as well as my side not really tracking how I had hoped, but a combination of of those guys coming into form some wise trading and just you know natural fluctuation throughout players and the popular players and it's worked myself back into it but looking at some scores Heath Shaw has been fantastic as a Simpson as soon as I brought those guys in they've done exactly what I had hoped Bartel he's hit a good vein of form Birchall was iffy but he also went off at certain times probably wasn't right for the last 30 or 40 minutes or whatever it was Rich is struggling I mean he's not going great I mean he's still averaging 84 I feel like he's still got another gear to go but the Lions are struggling as well so and Darcy Byrne Jones an example of that I'll touch on those rookies and cash cows as a whole soon Shout out to Scotty Pendlebury, he's been absolutely fantastic. Gary Ablett is starting to wane and he's struggling with a whole range of things, confidence, fitness, team performance, everything like that. He's not going too bad, he's just coming back to a normal human being, but... Scott Penderbury, when I seemed out of captain options, I was down and out. He has lifted in the last two weeks and provided 286 points and 314 or whatever it was as skipper. So absolutely fantastic. Dylan Shield had his best score for the season, as did Tom Liberatore. Ollie Wines was serviceable, and he's probably going to end up being my mid eight or something like that, mid nine maybe. He's uh, just going okay, but he does he leads the lead league in clangers so a bit disappointing speaking of disappointing brad crouch has been absolutely disgusting he's been terrible i mean I, I didn't expect him to come out and average 105 but i honestly thought he was a lock for for 90 um i really thought worst case scenario he'll you know have some good ones some bad ones he'll average 85 and make some money he has been deplorable so he's on the out with scores of 51 and 46. Kerridge, 67. He's just not quite finding the numbers he once could. Petrarca, I thought, played well. Granted, I didn't see all the game, but what I saw, he looked like he was good around the clearance and, you know, good good sort of game, but didn't score as well. Gorn was poor, just didn't get into it. It was dropping marks he'd normally clunk, but Nick Nat was fantastic, dominated that first half, and, um, yeah, I think he scored about 70 points in that first half. Aaron Hall has slowed up like many sons. Montagno I brought in, had a lot of the ball, but a lot of cheap ball as well, 110. Martin was fantastic. Franklin was great, albeit tackling every broke bloke on the ground high um, gave away a lot of frees did Lance Papley was yeah deplorable I mean watching that game 
it was unbelievable. I reckon there was a stage where, you know, he touched the ball and he turned it over. Clanger, out in the full, dispossessed. You know, he, he kicked a good goal late and laid some hard tackles, but he wasn't great. But Corey Ellis is probably one of my favourite picks for the whole season. Very unique. Took a risk by going a bit more of an expensive guy. A lot went Ben Kennedy, who was good, mind you. But I've really loved the Corey Ellis pick. He's at 322000 and he's still got money to make. So I really like that. Now I'm just going to touch on another fact. I've used 10 trades already, down to 20, and it's going to keep happening, guys. I'm going to keep trading hard. I've still got a few players in mind I can bring in because the way I'm thinking, if I can really trade hard and be lucky with some injuries, if I can have, you know, seven premium defenders, nine premium mids, um, you'd be pushing it to have seven premium forwards, but I think I can probably have, you know, definitely six and some decent cover, then, you know... You, you open yourself up to the potential that if an injury does come through, you can replace him with a premium. So that's my lofty goal. I try to do it every year. It hasn't been able to happen due to injury, lack of cash generation and things like that. But it's starting to look good and I feel as if it's possible. Um, these cash cows that I want to touch on, they're starting to peak. They're starting to beef up. And it's going to be close to probably laying a few of these off. I'll throw some names at you from my team. Obviously, Mitch Brown scored 29 after a great fortnight or so. He's about peaked. Marcus Adams, just about peaked. Darcy Byrne-Jones with that 29. I mean, he's rocketed up. He's at 326, but he's nearly peaked if he uh, can't score another 80-odd. George Hewitt, just about peaked. Break even at 35, but, you know, that's no guarantee either. Um, Kerridge had his first price drop. He has peaked. Brad Crouch went down as well. He's been a poor pick and must go. Tom Papley rose by about 5,000, but he's just about done. Um, a lot of those guys are probably 70 to 80% chances of getting their break even, but they're not going to break through that break even wall. They're not going to go smashing through it and go up 20,000 plus. They they may hover, they may up it by five or ten thousand. So it's not as though you have to offload them. Brad Crouch, who many of you probably don't have, but for me, his break even is ninety, and he's one you have to get rid of. And I will be doing that. So it's interesting to note a few of those guys. They've done their job. They'll probably some of them still got five k, ten k. If they have a good score, they might squeeze out twenty thousand. It can change quickly. One minute they score twenty nine, next minute they score a ninety, and if you pay enough and you wait those few weeks while well, just you know that three game rolling system just rolls over and you know all of a sudden they start making good money again but we need money now so a lot of these guys should be offloaded and probably something I'll touch on later in the week, more so in the weekend preview of who you should look at, but obviously McPherson, um, anyone from the Suns, because they do have a lot out, and it's obvious they're going to play guys. Rodney Ede forecasts that Jesse Joyce in the back line is probably going to get some games. There's a lot of players. Hopper scored 106 on debut. Fantastic. I know he's a bit pricey, but if he backs it up with anything like that on the weekend, he'd be almost irrefusable. So... That's my scores. How I went was pretty good. I'm happy with it. That's two really good weeks in a row. Certainly not getting ahead of myself. I just feel this is where I should be going, and I feel like I've made up some ground with some good trades, so I'm really happy about that. If we swing over to the Supercoach HQ League, I beat Sean, who, albeit, is overseas and probably didn't have too much of a look at it, so potentially I got a little bit lucky there, but scored, um, what did he score, about 1975 or something like that. I can't even see it. Oh, here I am at the top. No, I'm not. I've got the wrong bloody leg open. Well, there you go, guys. Just give me a moment. I was looking at one of my shorty supercoach leagues. Here we go. So he scored 1970, and as you can see there, Shorty's ranked seventh, so not too bad. I'm starting to work my way up. My percentage gets over 100, which doesn't matter too much because I've got the draw in there, but it's uh, just handy to have in case you never know what can throw up, get in the positive there. So really happy with how the league's coming along, as I've touched on in past weeks. Probably got away with some wins I didn't expect early on, and now that my side is starting to really track along well, I can probably knock off some bigger names. So, being fortunate, I probably deserve to be out of the aid. But I'm in it, and I feel my team's only getting better, so it's promising. And I've got to touch on Josh as well. Garlic's best 22. He scored 2,227 there. He's flying. He's ranked 
571. That's just fantastic. So, worth noting there. He's travelling fantastic. Good luck to you, mate. I hope you can keep going. And also worth noting that the Supercoach League, Supercoach HQ League, is ranked 131 out of 25,000 odd leagues. So, that's extremely good. It shows we know what we're talking about. And I think, uh, as you can tell by the content that comes out from the website, it's no luck that we're ranked that highly. We do know what we're talking about. So, that was the week that was for Shorty, and it was a good one. Very happy with it. Had its ups and downs, but as I pleaded early in the season, give me some high scorers, and I got it. Some 120s, 130s, 140s, a big captain. Sometimes that's what it's about. It's great to have consistency, but if you can have one of those 140 guys and he's your captain, then a 120 and a 130, all of a sudden it makes up for some of those poorer scorers, I guess. Down the track, if we can eliminate some of those poorer scores in um, in the likes of rookies and really upgrade them, all of a sudden that's when we can start getting beyond 2,500. And I guess that's always the goal come the second half of the season to really pump out some big scores consistently. So thanks for listening, guys. Give me your feedback as always. I hope you had a good week. Hope you scored some decent points and we're happy with it. Um, stay tuned for the podcast later in the week, the weekend preview. Probably be the Thursday, possibly the Friday, just depending how it all tracks along. I don't think there's any massively pressing issues, depending how I go for time. I might make one on the rookies and the ones you might want to cull and things like that. What do you do? Give me your thoughts on that, because I don't mind doing an extra more specific sort of video. I feel they get a bit more views when people want to know an answer to something exactly. There's no real big injuries, I don't think so. Um, definitely give me your thoughts on that you know if you see someone comments on what I should do and you think it it's a good idea then like their comment as well because it gives me an indication that that's popular people want to see it so get around it and uh, if I get enough interest on a certain aspect and have the time then I'll definitely do it so thanks again guys subscribe as always and I'll chat to you guys later in the week